morning, beloved congregation. Today, we delve into a profound topic that often remains shrouded in mystery and misunderstanding, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Holy Trinity, is an essential yet often overlooked aspect of our faith. Understanding the Holy Spirit is crucial for living a vibrant Christian life, for he is our helper, comforter, and guide. In John 14, 26, Jesus makes a profound promise. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Here, Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit as our helper, one who will teach and remind us of Jesus' teachings. This promise is reiterated in John 15, 26, where Jesus says, when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. The Holy Spirit is not merely a force, but a person who testifies about Jesus and guides us into all truth. The role of the Holy Spirit is multifaceted. In John 16 to 13 to 15, Jesus elaborates on the Spirit's role. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. The Holy Spirit is our guide into all truth, revealing the deep things of God to us and glorifying Jesus in the process. The Holy Spirit's work is not limited to the New Testament. In Genesis 1 verse 2, we see the Spirit of God moving over the surface of the waters, actively involved in creation. This creative power is also at work in the new creation. When we accept Christ, we are born again by the Spirit, as stated in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. The Holy Spirit is actively involved in our daily lives, empowering us to live out our faith. Romans 8, 26 tells us, In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses and intercedes for us in prayer. This intercession is vital, especially when we face trials and tribulations. One of the most tangible evidences of the Holy Spirit in our lives is the fruit he produces. Galatians 5 lists these fruits, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. These attributes are the hallmark of a life led by the Spirit. They reflect Christ's character and are essential for Christian living. The Holy Spirit is also a gift given to every believer. In Acts chapter 2, Peter declares, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This gift is not reserved for a select few, but is available to all who believe in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit empowers us to live godly lives and to be effective witnesses for Christ. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is a profound mystery and a glorious truth. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 states, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? The Holy Spirit resides in us, making our bodies his temple. This indwelling presence sanctifies us and sets us apart for God's holy purpose. Jesus promised his disciples power through the Holy Spirit in Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. This power enables us to be bold witnesses for Christ spreading the gospel to the ends of the earth. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is not just for preaching, but for living a victorious Christian life. The Holy Spirit also bestows spiritual gifts upon believers for the edification of the church. These gifts are diverse and are meant to build up the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11 explains, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, 
to another faith by the same spirit and to another gifts of healing by the one spirit and to another the effecting of miracles and to another prophecy and to another the distinguishing of spirits to another various kinds of tongues and to another the interpretation of tongues but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually just as he wills these gifts are essential for the functioning and growth of the church in times of distress and suffering the holy spirit is our comforter Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the Comforter in John chapter 14. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another Helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit provides comfort and peace that surpasses all understanding, especially during trials and tribulations. Living by the Spirit requires yielding to his guidance and allowing him to work in and through us. Galatians 5.25 encourages us, If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. This means aligning our lives with the Spirit's leading, making decisions that honor God, and relying on his strength daily. Personal application. Now let us bring these truths into our personal lives. The Holy Spirit is not just a theological concept. He is a real person who desires a relationship with us. Think about your daily routine. How often do you acknowledge the Holy Spirit's presence? Do you seek his guidance in your decisions? Do you rely on his strength in your weaknesses? I remember a time in my life when I was struggling with a significant decision. I prayed and sought the Holy Spirit's guidance and he led me in a way that I could not have foreseen. His guidance brought peace and clarity reinforcing the truth that he is our ever-present helper. In conclusion, the Holy Spirit is an indispensable part of our Christian faith. He is our helper, comforter, and guide. He empowers us to live godly lives, produces fruit in us, and bestows spiritual gifts for the edification of the church. As we yield to his guidance and allow him to work in and through us, we experience the fullness of the Christian life. Beloved, let us embrace the Holy Spirit, seek his guidance, and rely on his strength. May we be sensitive to his leading and allow him to transform us into the image of Christ. Remember, Jesus said in Luke eleven thirteen, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Let us pray and ask for a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit today. May he fill us, guide us, and empower us to live for God's glory. Amen.